I want to share from 1 Thessalonians 4, uh, not the whole chapter because it covers different subjects, it covers the end times, and I'll do that next week, but just 1 Thessalonians 4, 1 to 12. Um, <coughs> Finally then, brothers, we ask and urge you in the Lord Jesus that as you receive from us how you ought to walk and to please God, just as you are doing, that you do so more and more. For you know what instructions we gave you through the Lord Jesus, for this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you abstain from sexual immorality, that each of you know how to control his own body in holiness and honour, not in the passion of lust like the Gentiles who do not know God. That no one transgress and wrong his brother in this matter, because the Lord is an avenger. In all these things, as we told you beforehand, and solemnly warned you, for God has not called us for impurity, but in holiness. Therefore, whoever disregards this, disregards not man, but God who gives his Holy Spirit to you. <clears throat> now concerning brotherly love, we have no need for anyone to write to you, for you yourselves have been taught by God to love one another. For that is indeed in what you're doing, but all the brothers throughout Macedonia. But we urge you, brothers, to do this more and more, and to aspire to live quietly and to mind your own affairs and to work with your hands as we instructed you, so that you may walk properly before outsiders and be dependent on no one. And somebody listening to somebody standing at the pulpit reading that will probably be terrified. They're, going to, they're probably thinking, what on earth is he going to say? And obviously, I mean, well, Paul, inspired by the Holy Spirit, has already said what needs to be said. But the point, my, my title tonight is Obstacles, Things That Get In The Way and What To Do About It. Because every one of us in this room knows, knows the Christian faith. We know the gospel. But when you're sitting at home or where you're out in the world, the devil will throw darts at you. And the darts that you get, th um, get thrown at you might be different to the darts that you get thrown at you. And things get in the way. <coughs> and things scare us. Things stop us. Things alarm us. A taxi driver was driving along the road and he decides to pick up a passenger. <coughs> the, passen the passenger... Um, uh, tells him where he wants to go and be driving for a while. And after a while, he th he's thinking, well, I wanna, I'm not quite sure if the, the taxi driver's taking me to the right place. So I'll just tap him on the shoulder. He taps the taxi driver on the shoulder, and the shoulder, then the taxi driver nearly has a heart attack and stops. He said, what have I done? Have I scared you to the driver? He says, no. He says, this is my first day as a, a taxi driver. And, uh, you know, you, you, when you tapped me on the shoulder, you know, it's my first day as a taxi driver. I've been working for cheaters for 25 years. <laughs> cheaters are a funeral service. Anyway, <clears throat> my, my title today is um, Obstacles, Things That Get In The Way. <clears throat> Psalm 139, 23 to 24 says, Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See through is any offensive way in me and lead me to the way everlasting. <clears throat> so to start with, he touches on the subject that is worth pointing out. So what is it? I'm, uh, no, I, I'm very skilled in looking at my audience. I know we, I think, I think once, those of you remember, we had Gerald Coates preach here twice. And I think on the second time, he went into a subject very deeply, and I respect him, that I would have probably rather use a men's discipleship group, and it's fine, but I respect him. And don't worry, I'm not going to go into details tonight, but what I'm going to say here, he talks about um, that you should abstain from sexual immorality. In other words, he, what he's saying, is, he's saying is, is that Christians have rules that they need to follow still. Yes, we're under grace, but there is a way to behave and a way not to behave. <clears throat> and my point, my point is to hear is not what our temptations are, but the fact that you may find yourself, or I may find myself, or, or, or any time, with things that we're struggling with that we can't get through. I've had people walk up to me and say, can I see you? And particularly when I was at my last church in Guernsey, and I said, well, so I need to share something with you which has bothered me. It's an area that I'm struggling with. And they'll say, I am struggling with A, B, C, D, E. I think, my goodness. You know, but you don't say that. You listen to them. You know, when you're in counselling, you, you ask yourself various questions. What's the first thing? Is this person about to commit suicide? No. So you, you bring grace into it straight away. So let, let's first thing, let's have a cup of tea. And you bring Christ into it. And you let them talk and everything else. So what my point tonight is that you may be facing obstacles. He's talking about sexual morality here. You know, 
And, and, and I'm saying, don't just allow obstacles to destroy your Christian faith and to get bigger. <coughs> there is always somebody you can talk to. Now, in a church like this, the majority of this room happen to be born a little bit earlier than me in, in, the, in the 20th century. <coughs> so some of you might think, yeah, I can share this with Dave. Some of you might think, well, no, actually, I, I feel very... I, I can't share this sort of thing with Pastor Dave. I love him, I respect him, but I, I know... Mr. Blah, blah, blah from here, or Mrs. Blah, blah, who I've known for years, and I can share it with them. That's perfectly fine. You know, if you feel that you've got something you need to share that is keeping you down, you can share it with me, or you may have a leader in another church or another Christian brother and sister, you can share it. But what I'm saying is if you've got something that is bringing you down and that is stopping you progressing in what God's got for you, share it with somebody, and the Holy Spirit will tell you who to share it with. You know, you can't stand at the front and, by the way, say, oh, by the way, I'm, I'm struggling with this, because it's not right in a church. You know, men's discipleship group, maybe, or, or ladies, if you, that kind of thing. But, <coughs> but, 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 but my point is that we cannot deny that those things are there. And what he realised here is that, is that, and what the Holy Spirit told him and what he'd known already, <coughs> is that these people had problems and he'd specified what they were. And he was also saying, look, um, you, you need to know how to control your own body um, in, in a way that, it, that is holy. And that's, that's the case for all of us. But it's, it's something, um, you know, I'll, I'll mention the fruits of the Spirit in a moment. But, he, but he's talking, he's saying here, you know, don't just try to progress through your Christian life. Because I used to, see, I used to think, as a Christian, I think, I, I totally agree with the Gospel, I agree with everything in the Bible. But if temptation wasn't there, uh, or, or, or if, if the devil wasn't there, throwing darts at us, it would be easy. Christian life will be easy. But the temptations come in <coughs> and, and, and these things happen. And you hear um, so many stories through Christian TV over the years about, you know, Mr. XYZ, who used to be a great preacher and suddenly fell from grace you know, because of, of this. Or we allowed the devil to get in in such a way. And it's very, very difficult um, when, you, when you are doing uh, any work of the Lord uh, to deal with the, I mean, I mean, you know, the Holy Spirit is the wonderful counsellor, but it's always good, Galatians 6.2, uh, in the context of this sort of stuff, says, carry each other's burdens, in this way you'll fulfil the law of Christ. So, um, I mean, in an ideal world, I mean, John Wesley used to get men together, and they used to confess their sins, absolutely every one of them together. And there is possibly a scope for that in the right, in the right setting. Um, but but, but, but I, do, I still feel it's important, not that we need to confess it in order for God to forgive, we need to confess it so that God can sanctify us, help us with it, and, 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 get, us, and get us through. And sometimes we need a bit of a, a, a push start from other people. The, um, one of the problems we had when, at the beginning of 2020, when no one was going anywhere, and we were all locked up at home, most of us, <laughs> not partying, <laughs> you know, but, but uh, most of us were locked up at home. <coughs> And, um, and Jackie's car, after about two weeks, the battery went flat. And so every now and again, every week, I'd sort of start it up and move it and run the engine and put it back. And on one occasion, it, it, it sort of went... Uh, I sort of started it and it wouldn't move. So I, I said, the worst thing you can do, I reversed it out and started to push it myself and jump in. And then, and then I stopped it and then tried reversing it. I was doing this myself for ages. And after a while, a few people came along and helped to push the car and, and, and move it, and they got, we got it sorted together. And, as, and I parked it there, let it run over. And sometimes, some of us need a push start from other Christian brothers and sisters. The Holy Spirit will tell you what that is and when that is, but don't try to do it all yourself. You could be, I mean, he, he talks about sexual immorality, but you could be, you can have the most incredibly strong problem that you are dealing with um, and there is always a way through. The first thing the devil will say is, ha, 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 if those people at that church knew what you were like, just ignore the devil, please, because, you know, he, he just, just, just say, well, actually, uh, you know, I, I follow Jesus. He is powerful enough to help me with this, and number one, he's forgiven me, so get lost, devil. And, it's, and, it's, and, and there are all kinds of mitigating circumstances that can get in. So, you know, me and Jackie have always been, always said in the past that you can, you can share... <coughs> um, problems confidentially, um, you, know, you know, with us. I would say that obviously, if it was, I mean, if he came up to me and said, oh, "By the way, I've just butchered half of Winchester, half the houses in Winchester Hill," 
you know, I say, well, actually, we do need to phone the police. You know, uh, so, so, I mean, of, of some things are of such a, de a, a strong degree that obviously sometimes you have to do something about it, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that without telling you. I mean, that's an extreme thing. You wouldn't have murdered somebody. But, um, but the point is that it's always important to share things. And then he, he says, you need to know how to control your own body. Now, what, <coughs> what's he talking about here? Well, in, in Galatians, we talk about the fruits of the Spirit. So the fruits of the Spirit are evidences that the Holy Spirit is in us. Um, you know, it's love, joy, peace, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things, there is no law. You know, you wouldn't be arrested for, for self-control. You wouldn't be arrested for, uh, for keeping the peace. Um, I'm just going to grab my water. Thank you. Um, and so these are evi evidences... Um, that, that God's spirit is in you and it, and, and it gives you the peace. And so he's, what he's saying now he's, is Paul is challenging Christians. Now, should we challenge each other? Because we get into an incredible area here. So if somebody walks in here and I'm preaching the gospel or, or, or somebody else is preaching at the front, do we have the right to, to preach stuff which is generally challenging? Well, of course we do. It's important. <clears throat> many, many years ago, as somebody connected with this church, um, uh, most of you in this room, probably all of you, will very struggle to remember, probably won't, certainly won't remember his name, but he has been, been here on one or two occasions. <coughs> um, but you, you wouldn't know him, you wouldn't think, if I said, if I showed you a, bit, a picture of him, <coughs> I've not got COVID, um, I took a lateral flow test this morning, me and Jackie did, and it's just a, a remain, remains of a cold. Um, so don't worry, please don't worry. Um, the, uh, the, and this man, he had a, a massive problem with alcoholism. I mean, just to such a, a tremendous degree. He was a really gifted man. He was an accountant. Um, this stuff on a, a computers. And he, he, um, he had a massive problem. So I went around to see him. And I went in there. And there were literally bottles all over the place. Probably something like... Probably 10 to 15 wine bottles all over the place. And some ones unopened and cans there. And I'm sat down, and I'm thinking, I can tell you that Jesus loves you, but that's not what I need to say here. And I said to him, you need to sort your life out, otherwise you're going to be dead. You know, he, had, he, he, had, he couldn't come off alcohol, otherwise he'd have withdrawal symptoms. <coughs> <coughs> and so I said to him, look, uh, you need to sort your life out. And it, it was in the middle of something. He got really angry, and then he was fine, and he was apologetic. And, but, but I didn't just do it. It was part of a whole pastoral thing that went on for days and love, and it was part. But I knew I had to say it at some point. And so what, what, what Paul is saying here to his readers is, I am challenging you to look at things in your life that God doesn't want and to do something about it. He talks about what is um, acceptable for followers of Jesus. For God, verses 7 to 8, has not called us to impurity, but in holiness. Therefore, whoever disregards this, disregards not man, but God, who gives his Holy Spirit to you. Now, when we talk about living holy lives, it's, it's an incredible minefield. Because you get into an area of doctrine that is really, really important. As Paul said this morning about, about you know, obviously, if you, if you go up the, um, you, you look at the, uh, the Ten Commandments, in a sense, and and what elements of the Old Testament law are relevant today? So it's a good question. But what we know for sure is the fact that we need to live holy lives. Matthew 5, 48, be ye holy as I am holy, be perfect as I am holy, I'm perfect. But, but it's what the Holy Spirit enables us to do. Um, and so, in a sense, that there, are, there are, since Jesus, there are all kinds of branches off that have gone off to different dodgy sort of avenues. Some people say that you don't need to be holy as Christians. I disagree with that. That's totally wrong. Uh, there are those in one extreme who say you can literally do what you want, you don't need to confess, don't need to repent, and it's as simple as that. I do not believe that is biblical. The other extreme is you confess every sin before you go to bed or else. That's also extreme, I believe. And when you look at the New Testament, balanced with um, what Christ has said about the Old Testament, you get the balanced view. Um, um, it's like um, John MacArthur actually said, if you could lose your salvation, we all would. Yeah. Everyone would lose it immediately. You could be the holiest person in the world. And if you could lose it, you'd lose it there and then. All of us. There wouldn't be one person to get to heaven. That's why Christ came. That's what this is about. That's what the blood and the cross. So if you're in an area of deliberate sin, God will deal with it. And we could get into, you know, there's all kinds of questions about your birthing and everything else. But 
But, so, so, but it's important to live a holy life. As, but that is part of how the Holy Spirit talks to me. You know, if, I, if David was outside and I, I got angry and punched him, and, you know, the Holy Spirit every single time would say, go and, look, you need to go and say sorry, you need to go to him and say, look, let's go to the police together, Do you want, you know, deal with it together. You know, and, and, and so the Holy Spirit talks to you about what is acceptable for, 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 for followers. So if I, followers of Christ, if I'm simply, if I'm preaching this now and I'm, I'm determined to go out and steal a car afterwards, you know, there'll be a heaviness about my preaching. There'll be a real, uh, God will be challenging me. There'll be a real sense that the Spirit is talking to me. God would probably tell somebody else in the Spirit that I was going to do that. And it's how the Holy Spirit works with us. But, the, but, but the, the, the devil puts obstacles in there. Where are we? Quarter past. Um, but 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says, No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. Praise the Lord. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can <coughs> endure it. And... Um, but then in, in verse 9, he reminds us of the main focus of all Christians. Now concerning brotherly love, you have no need for anyone to write to you, for you yourselves have been taught by God to love one another. So what, what we... <coughs> um, now I shared this with the people at the prayer meeting on Friday, but there's only, I think, some people are away, out, and so there's Mary and Dave Manning. So I'll share this illustration, and I'll draw this to a close. But it's incredible how God challenges you, because... We, Paul's saying here, you know, you need to look at yourself, challenge yourself uh, about the things that get in the way. And I said to God, speak to me about things that get in the way. And why does he always do that when that happens? Why does the Holy Spirit always convict you and challenge you? Um, and uh, we have a situation whereby at about quarter past three, I pick Ashley up from Mountbatten School, where she goes to, so I'll take my computer or my Bible or, or something I'm doing in my work in the car. So I have to get there fairly early, a bit half an hour earlier, and so I'll always do some pastoral phone calls or something in the car while I'm waiting for her. Uh, she gets in the car, she comes home. And then we have a problem. It's in reverse. Because around Mountbatten School, um, everyone complains about people parking there and everything else. And we come back. I come back to my house, and it's in reverse. I come back and find all kinds of people going to the, the junior school parked there. And I used to come back, and there's always somebody parked on my drive. When I say my drive, there's a garage space. You know, you know where we live. Um, there's always somebody parked there. And I, and I, and I used to say, Ashley said, don't, don't, don't get angry, don't get angry. And I said, I'm not getting angry. I, just, I, just, I always sort of see them parked there and I always wa wave to them and politely remind them they need to move because it's my property. But it's like the Holy Spirit saying to me, why? Why is that so important? You know, why can't you just bless somebody? Um, and, and so the Holy Spirit is telling me personally, in my situation, in my life, um, to, to if there is somebody parked there, um, just let them park there. Just bless them. You know, Christ was crucified on the cross. I've been through nothing compared to him. And so that was a little thing where God was challenging me. And I believe that God is challenging you as well. And just a list now of some obstacles that get in the way. Um, I mean, he talked about sexual immorality. But obstacles you may face on your path. Now, what I'm doing tonight, I'm being absolutely obvious. Gerald Coates, when he spoke here, was so blindingly... Um, obvious. Um, what, what was the, what, it was so truthful and so in your face that I thought the Holy Spirit had to have told you all that because I, I wouldn't have even mentioned any of the things that, you know, he, he talks about he talks about real problems that affect men and we go into incredible detail. And what was it, about two or three years ago? Because he came here twice and I thought the Holy Spirit obviously told him to do that but I wouldn't even go that close. But what I'm saying to you is, is what he said and what, you know, this is an element in the life that you will have things in your life <coughs> that nobody else knows about. That if they knew about it, then, then obviously they'd, they'd think, my goodness. You know, and if you're in a married relationship and it's there, you need to be open with your husband or wife. That's a separate thing. <coughs> and I can tell you for a fact that I'm not doing anything in my life that, that I couldn't really share at the front and, and certainly nothing... Um, on, on a moral level, that, that you know, I'm, I'm, I, leave a, I lead a very boring, clean life compared to probably other people. Um, I'm not talking about Christians, but I'm talking about people in the world. But obstacles that you may face in your Christian faith, persecution, fear, hurt, pride, temptation, being in with bad friends, 
loss of faith. In a bad church, no church nearby, boredom, wrong view of God. All these things could be things that are holding you back. And I would say that it's important for every person to, to, to look at the things in your life that are taking you away from relationship with God and, and, and look at those things and simply say, God, help me with this. And he may lead you to somebody else. He may, you people have shared the most extreme things with me. And when I've listened to them, I've thought, okay, as you've said, I won't go any further. We have a little chat. I, s- I assess what state of mental health they're in, you know, and we have a good chat about it. And, and that's, that's part of my job. And, and, it, and it's what we've done. We've done it with, with obviously, um, young people. But if it's, if it's under a certain age, then we, unless it's something mega serious, but one case, mega serious many years ago. But other than that, we involve the parents and, and, you know, and chat. If they're over 18, then we just chat in general. So I'm saying to you tonight, the Holy Spirit, when he works in your life, is the greatest thing you've ever had. Your relationship with God is the most incredible thing. But the devil will occasionally put things in there and, and, um, and th- that it's difficult to get out. One final illustration, I'll pray. Many, many years ago, my father died in, in 1978 from chronic bronchitis, asthma, emphysema, and heart disease. And he used to sit in the wheelchair in the back garden just to sit there. And he died when he was 66. He was just a very, very ill man. And he said to me and my mum, he said, there was a little apple tree that we planted many years earlier. And he decided he didn't like where it was and he wanted it moving. And so in the afternoon, he would sit there in his wheelchair and we'd try and dig, me and my mum would try and dig this tree up. And the, 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 the more we tried to dig it, the roots just went deeper and deeper. And in the end, we just said, we can't do it. We just cannot do it. Now, somebody who knew, what, knew about gardening could have done it, but we just couldn't do it because that, that tree had got deeper and deeper. And don't allow any trees the devil's planted in your life to go deeper and deeper. Because in this room are prophets, evangelists, um, powerful men and women of God. But if the devil has put trees in there, then the first person to go to is God and say, Lord, just help me with this. Help me to know what to do about it. So I've looked at that particular passage of scripture there and I've majored on the fact that he said, look, if you are suffering with A, B, C, then I challenge you to do something about it. I mean, it's, it's the whole counsel of God. And so, <coughs> I'm going to leave that with you. So next week, I'm going to, I'm going to gra- grasp the bull's horns of the end times. I love the end times, and we'll start with what it says here in Thessalonians.